So uh, we're on. Uh, this is the uh, antenna that's pointed. Uh... Dave has been experimenting with sloping dipole antennas, and he has installed five of them in different directions. He is K4WDG, and here he is showing me the different signal strengths he is getting as he switches through his five dipole antennas. Uh, they were out there, which is about 160 uh, um, degrees or towards southeast. That's pretty good. Here is a representation of a dipole antenna. We have a coax cable that runs to the center. And here's the connections to that dipole. The shield is on the right side and the center conductor is on the left side in this drawing. And Dave started with a little bit more wire than what he needed, 64 feet, and he trimmed that back as he tuned that length of wire, the overall length, for 40 meters. Now a dipole antenna that is up in the air will have a radiation pattern very similar to this. It looks like a large donut. This is Dave's first sloping antenna. This is the top connection. You can see the insulator and the wire runs down to the center connection. And of course the rest of it gets lost in the trees. Here's a look at those connections again. The top insulator here on the tower is the 40 meter antenna we're looking at. And here's our center connection. And here's the other end. And the left side there, that cord, is attached to a tree. Now one thing about these antennas, they are difficult to see. As you can see here, even when I enhance the picture, it's still very difficult to see, so I went ahead and drew in where this antenna is. And on the right side is the shielded side, and the upper left part that's attached to the tower, that is the center connector of the coax. Here is the advantage of sloping this dipole antenna. The radiation pattern is no longer a nice clean donut. This radiation is bounced off the earth and off of the tower and at an angle. So we get a lot of radiation pointed at the atmosphere at an angle. And again that's because the earth and the tower is acting like a corner reflector. One of Dave's first contacts with this new antenna was with Australia. And here Dave is explaining how this works. That's west, right? But if I take 270 out, what happens is it's following the great circle. And if you leave west here, it ends up over uh, uh, Cancun in that area. I guess that's Cancun. Hawaii. See, that's uh, 
270 right there. It goes Would south of Hawaii. And if you carry it on out, that's uh, roughly 270 right there over Australia. And you see how it, that right there is roughly 270. Dave's signal report from Australia was S9 plus 15. Now, of course, that doesn't always happen, but he's found it to be very reliable and has just contacted Wake Island. Here is another look at the Earth showing what Dave was talking about, the Great Circle from North Carolina at 270 degrees to Australia. Now if we could take those two dots from North Carolina to Australia and put them on the edge like this, then add an atmosphere like this, what happens, as you can see here, the energy leaving North Carolina is being bounced off the atmosphere and the Earth several times to reach Australia. Dave was so pleased with the results of his first slope dipole that he put up four more pointed in different directions. Make sure I covered all the land masses at uh, 100 degrees, which is across the tip of Africa, Madagascar here, around that area. So with five antennas, five slopers, I got the whole world covered pretty much.